Let us pray. Father, we thank you for every opportunity in the kingdom of God. Thank you that we are allowed to come into this service this morning to hear your rich word. That this word might be deposited in these jars of clay, these earthland vessels. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Would you look somebody now and hug them before you sit down and tell them it's all going to work out. Now, open your Bibles up quickly. Let's, 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 let's get us a good little snack here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a lot of reading today. And I want you to see what God says. I think I'm going to name this message today. God wrote it, and I quote it. Look at somebody and say, God wrote it. Look at your Bible and say, God wrote it. But Bishop Hart is not afraid to quote it. Mm -hmm. God wrote it. And he did. I was at home last night and God was saying to me, said, said, you know, people need what we are not saying. There's a lot of things that are not being said across pulpits now that people need. And I heard the Spirit of God Spirit says, people need what we are not saying. God says, I wrote everything in the book. Genesis, the revelation, the concordance, and all of it. Chapters and verses. He says, I wrote it. We need people who will quote it. Because people in these last days need what a lot of people are not saying. I'm glad that amen is about some of y'all going to be on fire. Some God, 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 God's going to put a spark under some of y'all. You, you're going to burn brilliantly before this is all over. You're going to be hot to trot for Jesus before this is all over. It's tired of being dead in church and quiet. Like a Muslim or some, you know, and then they go to football games and basketball games. I'm looking at the NCAA this weekend. They jumping up and down and standing all during the game. Nobody really sit down. People be trying to look to sit down in church. You get to those games, those people be trying to stand up and be trying to stand up over people. And when somebody hit two point eight, ha ha! Jesus done hit two point. He done he done knock home runs. He done thrown touchdowns and defeated the devil. And you can't get up and shout over him. I tell you the truth. Jesus is the man with the plan. He can handle it. Look at somebody say, he can handle it. Y'all are just trying a little while. Let it, let, just give your situation over to him the rest of this year and see, see how you come out. Take your hand off of it and let him handle it. Would you be willing to do that? Would you get loose your, loose, loose your grip from, from, from that area of fear? Because sometimes some of us holding on to fear. Fear don't have us, we holding on to it. Would you just loose the grip and just give everything you got over this year that you're concerned about? And let him handle it for a minute or two. I bet, I bet you the best will be yet to come. I know that to be true. Somebody say, I know that to be true too, Apostle. Just give more over to him. Yield, yield more over to him this year. Don't lean this year to your own understanding. But in everything you find yourself in, in your daily routine, give it over to him. And he will direct. He's the best director I know. Oh my, y'all don't want to hear what I got to say. Oh my, my, my. Let me read something to you before I read what I'm going to read. Read, read, read Psalms. Go to Psalms 33. Psalms 33. You got that? Y'all hear that? You got that. Look at, look at, look at verse 6. This, this scripture will blow you away. Psalms 33, 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Man, I'd be driving up and down expressways and looking around and looking around at the atmosphere of heaven and seeing all the various kind of trees and plants that are on the sides of the road that are planted in the ground. I said, boy, God, 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 God is. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Well, what can that word do for you? 
If you can make heaven, I bet you can turn your hell into a heavenly situation. If it made the heavens. Somebody, someone give it a try, Apostle. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. All God got to do is breathe on your dead situation. It'll come alive. All God has to do is breathe on your marriage. It'll come alive. All God's got to do is breathe on your finances. They'll come alive. All God's got to do is breathe on your promotion. And you will have it in your life. It'll come alive. All God's got to do is breathe on your circumstances. And they will radically be transformed. Everybody say. Formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. Took some dirt and breathed into it. And he started walking around and talking. Had his own mind. Look at verse 8. Let all the earth fill the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Standing amazed at it. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. I'm just overtaken. When I can look at the splendor and the wonder of your creative power. How you make gnats and bumblebees. Make a bumblebee with a big old body with little, little small wings is able to still fly. Lightning bugs light up and there are no extension cords to them. I'm amazed at what you can do, God. Allow you to get up this morning, start you on his way. You get in the car with eyes to see, know how to put your, your, your feet on the pedal to drive here. And you're doing this on, on automatic mode. You're not robotic. No wires and strings attached to you. You go home tonight and pull back the cover on your bed. Yeah. Lay down and rest, and we take all that for granted. And God is still in that red room with you. And you're not like a mechanical robot doing this. Let me do that. Pull back cover. Uh, pull back sheet. You just go in there and do it so. You just flow doing it. The way the body is made. For he spake, verse 9, and it was done. Lord, have mercy. God, speak in my situation so it can get done, please. I'm about trying to, trying to do it for myself. Would you please put your word on my situation? Would you please speak to my finances? Would you please speak to my relationship? Would you please speak on my job for my promotion? And he spake. And it was done. Not beginning to get done, it was done. As they say in the old school, not fixing to get done, but it was done. God's words get things done immediately when he says it. That's why when you get saved, you're saved by his word. He said, you're complete already. You're done already. You just got to understand the process of the being done. Look at somebody say, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Doesn't matter what your circumstances are. How you've been vacillating and things been up and down. Someone's God to speak into your situation. It'll be done. All the heartaches, all the pain, all the vexation, all the irritation will fade away. For he spake and it was done. He commanded it and it stood fast. Creation got in place. So wait a minute, I can't run nowhere. I got to stand fast. God got a sound word. Sun still coming up in the east and setting in the west. Because God said, son, do that. It's standing fast on the word of God. You're not, you don't have no guesswork about that. You just know the sun is going to come up in the east and it's going to set in the west. You're not getting up, biting your nails and twiddling your thumb about one of the sun, one of the one is going to work today. What, what's going to be like today? It stands fast when God gets it done. By his word. 
Verse 10. The Lord bringeth the counsel. Oh my. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. There are many devices in a man's heart. Many agendas, many plans, many ideologies, many philosophies. He said, but I'm going to bring all that to none effect. Man, we need to get the mind of God and the will of God in our hearts and on our minds so we can be effective. Look at somebody says, I really want to be effective. So I want to be effective with my children. I want to be effective as a student. I want to be effective on my job. I want to be effective in my marriage. How does that happen? As you seek the knowledge and the counsel of the Lord. Oh, this is, this is it's simple, but it's profound. It's deep, 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 deep. And he spoke and it was done. God don't even look back after what he said. It's done. God don't have to follow up on nothing. My, my, my. That's why he wants you to believe what he says. All you got to do is speak a word of faith. Stop worrying about it. Stop trying to follow up on it. Just speak it, believe it's done, and keep believing God, and you'll walk right into it. Where they on fire people at today? Where they amen people at today? It don't really come unless you say it is so. Then it begins to be burned in your spirit. Everything is with your mouth. Your mouth has gotten you in trouble. Your mouth has saved you a lot of times. Everybody say amen. amen. The counsel, verse 11, of the Lord standeth forever. Oh, yes. Amen. Forever? Wait a minute, God, you don't come out like fast and fashions and go and come? Never. You're not seasonal? Never. 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 What God has said is going to stand forever. Never. You're going to live forever. You have eternal life in you. Somebody ought to shout. You have in you right now eternal life in this transitional world. Even if you lay down in a grave and get covered up with dirt, you're going to pop up out of there because of the life that God has given you. It's eternal. That's why God says, oh, death, where's the steam? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Well, you got some in these clay jars, these earthly vessels that you can't buy at Walmart. You got a dose of eternal life in you. That comes from a whole nother dimension. You can search the world. You can't find this anywhere. In any marketplace. It has to come down from heaven. You're born again from above. Wow. Because somebody said, and you be somebody. Say, you somebody right now. Say, at this moment, you somebody. Devil just trying to tell you you're not, but you are at this moment. The counsel of the Lord standing forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whom God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Announcement. Did you know God is inheriting you? Did you know that you're God's inheritance? You are some precious jewels according to the book of Malachi. Hallelujah. Or if you can't say amen, say amen anyway. Amen. Not only are you heirs of God, you're going to get everything he got. 
But he's fixing you so you, you can get everything you got. Somebody said, I got that. Okay, now let me read, let me read, let me read this out of 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. Did y'all know that the gospel is not earthly wisdom? This is why I say that there's a knowledge above college. I don't want you to misunderstand me. But God had already specified and laid out life before any man's institution ever came on the scene. All men's institutions are a three-dimensional world and it's predicated and centered around sense knowledge. God lives by revelation knowledge. He says, Peter, you got the revelation and upon this rock I'm going to build my church. I'm going to go past your five senses and I'm going to deal right in your spirit. And I'm going to birth some things in you and produce myself in you and you're going to feel good about it. And you will end up saying, oh, what a joy divine. Good gracious of me. Anybody feel good beside me today? <laughs> Three or four of y'all, uh, you know, you're getting ready to get some promotions. It's coming from God, really. You sitting here, you sitting here like you don't even know what's happening. Kind of unconcerned. And God is next week in front of you, like John the Baptist, preparing the way for your promotion. Because his wisdom is over man's wisdom. His thoughts are higher than man's thought. So he can go in there and elevate anything he wants to, including your promotion. Look at somebody say, I'm going to believe this, I'm going to believe this, I'm going to believe this. Well, before you believe this, you need to receive this. You need to receive this. Because you can't believe what you don't receive. Say, I'll receive this today. It, this is interesting stuff to me. I, 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 I know. The gospel is not earthly wisdom. First Corinthians chapter 1. I'm, read some, I'm, I'm just going to read the word to you. God wrote it. I'm going to quote it. First of all, let's say this together. The gospel is not earthly wisdom. It comes from another dimension. It was not the knowledge of man that could figure out how Jesus walked on water. He had another kind of wisdom. Wow. He really had the wisdom of his father, which is God Almighty. First Corinthians chapter. One, do you have that? Yes. Verse 19. Amen. For it is written. Let me read this 18 verse. For, for the preaching of the gospel to them that perish. Are you with me? For the preaching of the gospel is to them that perish foolishness. I might look a little foolish up here. To the educated, the sophisticated, you know. And I'm ranting and raving and carrying on. Trying to tell you Jesus saved. He was on a piece of wood and he died on a hill far away called Golgotha. And how that affected you? You sitting over here in Georgia somewhere? That happened way over in the Middle East. Seems a little foolish, doesn't it? But if he can speak to the heavens and, and they can come into existence, he can be in Neverland and speak to you and, and, and it'll, it'll happen where you are. But unto us, which are saved, it's the power of God. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm up here ministering today, but there's some power coming from this pulpit. Yeah. This doesn't matter whether you plugged in now to the current. Look at somebody say, I'm plugged into the current. Because God wants to send some power your way this day. I got the joy of the Lord up on me. I'm elated about what God is doing. I serve my creator. He's blessed going in. He's blessed going out. He's blessing me. Are you plugged into the current? Listen, you ready today. You can see the power so Everybody said power. Power. Wonder working power. Not only does God have power, he 
peace and power that make you wonder. You been now. You wonder how that happened to me. I don't know how this happened. I, I wonder how I got over. Verse 19. For it is written. Oh man, the story has already been told. Look at somebody and so say, stop doing your own things and trying to write your own chapters. It's already written, people. He wrote it, I quote it. If you're not born again today and you're not living by this, you're out here writing your own chapters. That means you got to figure out how that thing going to come out. God done already told you in the end how it's going to come out. He already told you you're going to sit at the mass up of the Lamb. He already told you you're going to come back and rule the rain with it. He already told you you're going to mount up on the white horse. He already told you. He already told you that you got gifts coming. He already told you you got eternal life. He already told you that I'm your help. Stop living your own life. You got to try to figure this thing out yourself. Quit writing your own chapters. It's already written. That's why people commit suicide. That's why you have so many domestic disputes. That's why people don't drug because they're trying to live their life outside of what is written. God wrote it, I'm going to quote it. Now God says some things here now. You better so look at somebody and say, I better strap myself up right quick. Because God will say some things to take you real high. And he wants you to come now with a happy landing. But if you ain't stopped in now, this turbulence, uh, this turbulence will make you think you had a rough ride. Somebody say amen. Y'all better get like them cherubim with some fire in you now. So God can show you some revelation past your five senses. Oh my, he said, for it is written, I'll, wait a minute. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Oh, we got a lot of required then. Y'all stopped in? Because I'm going to read what he wrote. He wrote it, I'm going to quote it. God says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. He says, watch me now. He said, that's already been written. Oh, God. Who are the wise? Those that think that they can get through life just having sense knowledge. Those that think they just got academic degrees on the wall. They think that's what life is really all about. My question is, why is the world waxing worse if education is the answer to everything? What would God say that I'm going to destroy the wisdom of man if, if that's the answer to humanity's problem? And as I look around in the world, and I've been living a little while, I don't think it's really the answer. I think it's a band-aid slapped on a temporary... As it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing. Sound like what I read over there in Psalm 33. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. You know the wise guy. You know the self-made man. You see what I've accomplished? You, you see all my diplomas and my degrees on the wall? I built the ivory tower. I built the Statue of Liberty. I built the Tower of Pisa, even though it's leaning. I built it. We've been to the moon in the shadow. We were able to discover the past that you shoot the rockets off. Yeah, but what you gonna do with the rapture when we just gonna get pulled up? Since you that smart. You got to go make all these insulated uniforms and, and God going to say, I'm just going to call them up and they're coming up in the twinkling of an eye. Since you're a wise guy and you got it all together. Y'all still like me. And he wrote it. I'm going to quote. I'm reading right out the Bible. Then God, God, steps off, God steps off of nowhere and says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Who's writing down what's supposed to be going on? Who's putting this in script? I've already written it. It's already been written. You can't write down nothing that I've already wrote. Because I already know the story from the beginning to end. I am Alpha and Omega. What kind of, what, what, is it, what is it that you're scripting down? 
Oh, you're trying to find a vaccine for cancer? Or you're trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to discover some kind, of, some kind of vaccine for Parkinson's disease? Or what are you trying to do? My son's name is over all that. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Who's going to debate with me? I already know the outcome because I've begun everything. I started, started. And I'm all in between start and finish. So what are your scribes right now? Some philosophies of life? Well, I think everybody had their little philosophies of life, but your, your, your mojo wasn't working. Let me see, you're going to try to get all the girls you can get? Come on, somebody. You're going to try to have all the fun you're going to have? Yeah, that's what you call life. I'm going to try to get all the gusto I can get. I'm going to get Gus and his toe. Come on, somebody. I'm going to make my daughter a major debutante. And we're going to be the sophisticates in society. God says, uh, but what about my son? What about what's written? What are your scribes writing? I done told you the story. I done told you the conclusion, the beginning and the conclusions of it. You need to get in on my, my story. Stop writing your own script. Oh, I love this. I love this. He says, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Yeah. How did he do that? Pharaoh said, I'm Pharaoh. You know, Pharaoh was in Egypt. Yeah. Did y'all know that Egypt is a type of the land of the senses? People who live in Egypt, they're always operating by their five senses. Well, taste, feel good. Oh, man, she sure is fine. Oh, man, boy, she make me feel good. But you don't know what's behind the flesh. You don't know the spirit of the person. You don't know the attitude that might come with it. You don't know whether they might have some kind of sex transmitted disease either. You're just looking at our appearance. I'm like, oh man. Shake my groove thing. And after your encounter, you're disappointed. Then after that, you got doctor's appointments. Come on, somebody. She really shook your groove thing, didn't she? God says, that's your philosophy of life? He says, I've already written down what you're supposed to live like. It is written. Because somebody said, Apostle Bowl this morning. So he said, God wrote it. And he said, he's bold enough to quote it. God says, I'm going to make foolishness the wisdom of this world. Well, my God, what does that put Yale and Mohouse and Spelman and Agnes Scott? What does that put Einstein and the theory of relativity in? What does that put Rousseau, the father of democracy? What does that put Plato? What does that put Epicurean? Who says he drank and be miracle? You don't know where the moral coming out. Just go get it. Have your fun. But God says you pay a penalty behind that. What about the Stoics philosophy? What about, what about everything is relative? If it feels good, do it. God says, I didn't write that. So I'm going to bring that kind of wisdom in this world. I'm going to bring that to no cause. That's foolish philosophical ideas. He says, what you're doing, you're ever learning about the institutions and the ways of man, but you will not come to the truth. I said something here about two years ago. Listen now. I said this to you. I said, if you don't know the truth, your thoughts will wear you out. Y'all yes, yes, didn't get that, did you? You didn't, you didn't get that. Let me say it to these people. If you don't know the truth, your thoughts will wear you out. Uh, let me that get it. Somebody, they, they hit some cherubs, cherubs over here. If you don't know the truth, your thoughts will wear you out. Why? Because truth is the only stability, the only foundation in the land. When you go to bed at night and you don't know the truth, your thoughts will run with you and take, it'll make you turn over in the bed. It'll make you fall out of the bed. It'll give you sleepless night if you don't know the truth. Your thoughts will wear you completely out if you don't know the truth. And Jesus said, what this world is doing, they're ever learning. They're always participating in learning. 
They're always affiliated with somebody in learning. They always embrace in learning, but they will not come to the knowledge of the truth. And so all of our learning has still promoted a turbulent and a contentious society with strife and competition. That's why God says I'm going to have to bring the wisdom of man to know it. Let me, can I read on? God, look at somebody and say, God wrote it. Apostle quoted. it. Look at verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Did you know you can't know God by your education? Did you know you can't know God by your five senses? Did you know you cannot know God by just merely taking a Spanish class, a sociology class, a math class? Let me read this verse to you again. For after that, the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, knew not God. That second wisdom is the wisdom of man. All you young, young folks who think you're slick out here playing a hip-hop game and all this stuff, you know. Yo, yeah, brother. Hey, that ain't no wisdom. That, that's street knowledge. Which will end you up incarcerated if you don't get shot first. Come on. So true. Wrong wisdom won't help you none. My God, I love the way God writes the Bible. God wrote it. I'm going to quote it. God said there are some things that's not being said that people need. And this is some of it right here. Verse 21 again. For after that in the wisdom of, the, in, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, the world by the wisdom of man knew not God. Right. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching yes. to save them that believe. God says, okay, I'm going to have to bypass the wisdom of man. Because he can't help my cause. So I'm going to call some, some man and make, and make him look foolish before people. And he's going to get up and proclaim my word. Which was written before any institution of man ever existed. Because the word of God did not come from the earth. It came from heaven. Psalm says the word of God has already been settled in heaven. Mind you ought to get your heavenly mind. I know they're trying to tell you to stay real earthly, but the Bible tells you to set your affection on things above. You gotta have a heavenly mind to get through these earthly perils in these last days. The earth has no answer to the earthly problem. The heaven has the answer to the earthly problem. Earth has no sorrows that heaven can't not hear. I love the way the Bible is written. My God, but look at verse 30. The old preacher up there just ramping and raving, spitting all on me, splitting verbs sometimes. And God said, yeah, I'm saving people just with that. I know I look foolish for you because you're sophisticated and educated, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what you don't think should be done. I'm going to make somebody look foolish and save a whole bunch of folks. And then give them a life that they came by at no man's store here on earth. I love the way God operates. He says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts. He says, my ways are not like your ways. I like that analogy he gives. He says, make this compare. He says, so is the heaven higher than the earth? So are my ways higher than your ways. So are my thoughts higher than... Look at somebody said, we need to go higher. Higher, 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 higher. I love it, don't you? Look at verse 30 down there. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who are God, who of God is made unto us wisdom. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and what? Redemption. That according as it is written, God wrote it, I quote it. He that glorieth, let him glory in the what? Lord. Lord, have mercy. You want to glory about something? Glory about this Bible in your hand. You can get this in the inside of you. Glory about you can get true knowledge in the inside of you. Thank God for graduations and you getting your degrees. That's all you got is a degree. That means just a, just, just a cut above somebody else. When God is sitting at the very top. Y'all 
Oh my God. Look at verse 6 in chapter 2. Do you see it? Amen. The gospel is heavenly wisdom. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto glory. Unto our glory. Did you see that? God wrote all this out before the world began. And so you're going to be satisfied with a knowledge that comes after, after that which God has written? When God is the man with the plan? Yes. I tell people, go get your degrees, but you need to get the real master. Amen. If you really want a master degree, get, get the real master. Yeah. If you really want a PhD, praise him daily. Yeah. He'll show you more stuff that you could ever learn in a classroom setting. Yeah. Yeah. From a man's institution, y'all don't want to talk to you. I pray you get some balance on this. I'm just trying to show you which knowledge is going to rule. But rule. Yeah. Look at somebody said, there's a knowledge yeah. above college. Above college. Man, I love this. Suppose, and everybody wants to have a, 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 a what we call a prosperous and, a, and, a, and an overcoming life. And God tells you in, in the book of John, he says, if you meditate on the word day and night, then you will put yourself in a position to have good success and you will prosper. Everybody want to prosper. But yet we try to go all these other ways seeking other information trying to prosper. When God says all this other information you don't see, I'm going to eventually bring it to naught. If you would just only decide to live by what's written and then make this other little knowledge you got your supplement rather than your main meal. Right. Amen. That's right. And what we do, we make, we make the learning of man and this two should man our main meal and throw God in on the side. We're just coming here with what the Bible got to say. Yeah. God is the primary source of everything. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. My God. Say again, there's a knowledge above college. Wow. This is, this, this, when I first, I said, my, my, my. So Jesus has been made wisdom under us. Amen. Did you just read that? Amen. That Jesus is our wisdom. He's our sanctification. He's our righteousness. He's our justification. He's your life. Right. He's your mind. Yeah. Oh, my. He's your body. Aren't you called yeah. the body of Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Look at somebody said, we don't really have anything. Yeah. Watch it. Look up at me. But him. You don't need nothing but him. Me and you need to figure that out before you try to go and accumulate all these, this stuff you talk about putting in your hand. Because if you accumulate it, you might not know what to do with it if you don't have the wisdom of Christ. I got one or two others saved about to finish up. This is deep to me. I just love this. Look at verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. That is what is written. The hidden mysteries. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. God is just not surface. He's deep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please don't operate by your five senses. Please be full of the spirit. Yes, sir. Because God is establishing a relationship with you and he's producing that relationship through his word. How much relationship do you have with God? The word of God produces relationship in you with him. That's why some saints are filled with the spirit, but they're not fulfilled. Because they don't get enough of the word in them to bring total satisfaction. But yet we run out of other materials, we run out, run out of other, other literature to try to bring soundness and, and wholeness to ourselves and complete balance in our life. And God says, it's already written. Jesus is your just balance. He brings stability to your life. He brings stability to your finances. He brings stability to your decision making. He brings stability to your choices. You don't have to lean one way or the other. He'll straighten you up. He'll bring balance in your life. You don't have to seek out a lot of excess literature. Then I quote that through the preacher in the book of Ecclesiastes yes. that much reading is weariness to the flesh. Yes. Much reading what? Man's secular knowledge. Yes. Come on, T. 
teach it. Because I'm about to say, I need to make the Bible a party. And yet we'll go home tonight. We'll eat. We'll fall asleep around 7.30. Yeah. And, God, and the Spirit of God says, read the Bible. You'll look over there at it if it's near you. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll go to touch it, but you'll grab the remote. It happens to get in the way for your hand to go all the way over to the Bible. So it's just, it's just easily convenient to pick up the remote and start mashing stuff. You don't want to study to show yourself approved. And God said, I'm trying to approve you next week on your job. I'm trying to approve you to get your promotion. I'm trying to approve you for your breakthrough. I'm trying to approve you so I can grace you on a greater dimension. My grace is really sufficient for you. But you're not letting the word of God produce enough relationship in you with me. And that's why you feel with the spirit, but you're not fulfilled. Because you seek other literature and other information. And certainly we're in the information age, but we need to live by what? It is written. I think I'm about to say, God wrote it. Apostle, he, he, he really, really quoted it. Tell me tell us about it. Say so he closing out now. I just got to read this to y'all, boy. It's just, this is just... Look at verse 2. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, Comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. I wrote down something. Can you hear this right here? God's process is to take spiritual things to answer your natural problems. You cannot really answer natural problems and get them totally fixed where, where things will be satisfiable with natural things. You might fix it temporarily, but God has orchestrated his system to deal with natural circumstances through applying spiritual principles. Y'all please hear this today. And, and people shun when people say, you, 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 you're too spiritual. You need to be spiritual. What does that mean, Apostle? It just means you live more by the word of God than you do the literary writings of any man. That's all it means. The devil tried to put a religious connotation to it to make you think that you were strange and need to be rearranged. But I'm telling you, when you're living in the spirit, you're living by the word of God. And if you're living by the word of God, then the will of God is so acceptable to you to answer every natural circumstance that you have, you can take and apply a spiritual principle. And things will begin to diminish and erase and you won't see them again. He told him, he says, Moses, he says, this Pharaoh, he says, you will not see him again. If you operate with this spiritual connotation and this spiritual input that I'm about to put in your life. I know you got a little rod in your hand. It's just a natural tool. And you're looking at a major army now that is coming towards you to overtake you and Israel. And this little stick, you, you, if you look at it in the natural, the your natural circumstances, it won't do it. He said, but all I want you to do is hold it up. I'm going to apply a spiritual principle to your natural circumstances. And you're going to see things completely fixed. Look at somebody and say, I need to stop trying to fix my natural circumstances by natural resources. You might temporarily fix it, but it won't be fixed like it ought to be fixed if you apply spiritual principles. Say so he closed it now. I said that two or three times. I got I to gotta tell you that. Now, third chapter, and I'm going to read down from 18. 21, are you with me? He says, let no man deceive himself. Y'all got that? First Corinthians 3rd chapter verse 18. Look at somebody that says, let no man deceive himself. Look at me please. I can't tell you how many people in this population of over 6 billion people that are walking around in deception. I can't tell you how many people in church that come to church regular day and day out and they're still living in, in, in the atmosphere of deception. You know why? Because they don't apply the scripture because they don't study. You can't apply what you don't know. 
The Bible says this word, this word is, 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 is word of correction. And I like another word he said. And he says, and it's profitable. Everybody want to live profitable. Why don't you get in the book that can profit you? Thank God for a BS degree, a master's degree, a PhD in business management, uh, accounting. But I'm telling you, above and beyond that is a knowledge above college that can really fix some things in your life. Because every institutional man and every, 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 every literary writing a man, it has limitation in applying it. It can only work for a season or for a while. But this works all out through eternity. He says, my counsel will not come to naught. Because somebody said, that's a knowledge above college. Let no man deceive himself. How do you do that? By coming to church, sitting up here, saying you're saying amen to the word, and yet you're not receiving anything, and you still go out and read some other magazine, or some billboard, or some coming across the television screen, or some across the silver screen, and that's how you live your life, by somebody else's word, rather by it is written. You deceive yourself. And then you wonder why things are not going well. Why things are falling apart. You know, why, why, is, why, is, why is it like a puzzle? It can't nothing never really fit like I want it to. Why, why am I out here six flags and everything look like in my life going up and down? Look like I'm at six flags every day. Yeah. Up and down, all around. Yeah. I'm trying to get you to start reading the word of God and, have a, and salivate at the mouth about it. I'm trying to get you a taste and a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. You just got to cut off all them 40, 485 channels you got. You got to stop surfing and you got to start studying. If you want to be victorious because the war is escalating and the casualties in the body of Christ are picking up. And you're not going to defeat the devil as being a self-made man or a self-made woman. Or I did it my way. Only the word of God intimidates and defeats yeah. Your enemy, the devil, the adversary, Beelzebub. Only this will do that. And if he looks around, because he goes like a word around, seeking whom he can devour, the Bible says you have to resist him in the faith. You can't resist him because you're emotional. <laughs> Something happened to me. Something bad weed this week. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, what? bring me some word up out of that. Bring me some Holy Ghost power up out of that. Bring me some authority of the believer, which is the word of God up out of you. After you've been through your emotional trauma. Devil don't mind you crying. I told him in, I told him in, in our class today. The devil don't mind us coming to church. Are you kidding me? The devil don't mind you coming to church. He mind when you start to change. Where you start to say, hey, it's a better life. Hey, I'm not taking this anymore. Hey, I don't have to live low down like this. Hey, I got a better understanding. The devil come to church. You don't mind people having church? Y'all gonna have all the church you want to. What he minds is if you start to change. If you start to be transformed. That's why most people resist change. I'm closing. We need to learn to respect the fivefold ministry. I'm talking about the body of Christ in general. Most of the body of Christ don't recognize two of the gifts in the body, which is the prophet and the apostle, which God is now bringing back in his own wisdom and in his divine order. Most churches are operating with just the pastor, the teacher, and the evangelist. And I was telling the men that the way the world is going today, the church now is having to turn some very sharp curves all of a sudden in these last days. Come on, somebody. Y'all done had to turn some corners that while. But see, but see, if you don't understand the fivefold ministry, which is the hand of God, and we are not recognizing the prophet and, 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 and the apostle like we should, and giving them a platform like they should, you only been ministered to by a pastor, a teacher, or evangelist, then if the, if, the, if, the, if the body of Christ is having to turn some real sharp curves now, and we are, 
You know, it's like driving a car. If you only got three fingers trying to, trying to drive and you got to turn a sharp curve, it's going to be difficult. You got to have the whole hand up there trying to, if you turn that curve, y'all ain't got that, did you? See, people like prophets, they'll speak into your life and tell you, hey, this is, about, this is where it's going to go. Apostles come and set foundation and tell you, hey, get in order. Get some structure in your life. Stop being loose as a goose and tighten up. Can't make you feel good every Sunday. Can't hype you every Sunday with the evangelist. You need the order in the church now. You need a prophetic word from God as to where we're going and what time we're in. A lot of people are preaching stuff, but they're not preaching stuff, and it's good, but it's not in the timeables of God. You got to know what to preach in the time that we're living in. It's called a present truth. We should be making ourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. We should be under the law of preparation, getting ready for his appearance, his glorious appearance. I know we got to occupy till he comes. I know the Bible. You can look at our church and tell we've occupied till he come, but I'm telling you, the Lord is coming soon. And he's coming sooner than most Christians of the body of Christ even think. I want you to have your Cadillac. I want you to get married your third time. I want you to have some gold dripping around your neck. But at the end of all that, you ain't taking none of that with you. Set your affection on things above. And then maybe you'll get some more insight into the mind of God. Because the little popular message is all right. But it's more than popularity. This is about what is the extended intent of God in the time and the season that we're living. See, we know how to break our class up at 10 this morning because we know we were getting ready to go into prayer because we knew what time it was. If I had, we had any instructions on that, we would have sat back down at 4 o'clock this evening. Maybe, you know. When you know what time it is, there are certain things that need to be said. Thank God for all these messages going across their ways, but are they timeable messages? Are they fitting the season? Are they the intent of God for the day that we are living in? Because most saints don't have the preparation. They're not prepared. A lot of saints are living in the feet. And they're scared of everything. They, they're trying to figure out where they can get the church regularly. The Bible tells you in the last days, if you see the day coming, and that is the day of the Lord, his, he says, forsake not the day, forsake not your assembly. As you see the day approaching. And my book says, oh, how the days are telling. The days are revealing that the coming of the Lord is imminent. But sometimes regular pastors and evangelists and a teacher ain't going to tell you all that. Take somebody with a prophetic voice. Like a prophet or an apostle. To tell you what time it is. And believe it or not, this church and, and churches who are operating on an apostolic movement, an apostolic anointing, because God is restoring the apostle back into the fivefold ministry. Every one of us is going to have power in our life. You don't have to come to me and lay my uh, apostle lay hand on somebody. You're going to have that same apostolic anointing on your life. Whether you're in Macon, whether you're in Nebraska, whether you're in Key West, Florida, whether you're in Southern Alabama, whether you're up there in Atlanta in Cumberland Mall. You can lay hands on people and they shall recover. We are going back to the book of Acts. It's not called the Acts of the teacher. It's not called the Acts of the evangelist. Come on, somebody. It's not called the Acts of the pastor. It's called the Acts of the apostle. You stop playing yourself short. God want to God wanna put this power on you. So when you go to your job, when you find yourself in places, you'll be able to speak to your mountain. You'll be able to lay hands on the sick. You're more than just church members. God did not call you to be just church members. He called you to be kingdom keepers. When your daughter gets sick in the house, y'all are better than they had. You don't have to call no eldership. That's an apostolic anointing. When they see you uptown, they ought to see Jesus in you. You ain't got to call your reverend or your pastor. When sickness knock on your door, trying to affect your body, you ought to be able to lay hands on yourself. Praise the Lord.
Oh my God. Y'all stand up. I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let y'all go and, 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 and be a terror on the devil when you leave. I'm gonna loose y'all on the devil. Somebody say hallelujah. God wrote it. I was bold enough to quote it. Look at somebody said, there's a knowledge above college. I'll be glad when the body of Christ corporately begin to understand that it's more than ministry on a pulpit. Man, you're supposed to be laying hands on the sick. You're supposed to have. You're not supposed to be in the category of the have-nots. That is not the mind of God. You're not supposed to live in daily defeat. I know things will come against you, but you're not supposed to have a defeatist attitude talking out of a defeatist mouth. Well, do no thing. Keep happening with me. Forget that. It's happening with everybody. The temptation is common. When your test comes, can you respond properly to God so you can be stimulated by the Spirit of God to bring you into the necessary victory that you're supposed to already have? Because Jesus has passed the exam and put the results in your file. God is going back to the apostolic move of God where the whole body of Christ is going to be like the people in the book of Acts. It's recorded, it's written, God says. They said in the city that the, that the whole church turned that city. Not just the apostle, not just the preacher, not just the man. Just the whole, the whole church had an apostolic presence on them. They had an anointing persuasion on them that was unstoppable. Even the city officials, even the elected officials of the city, even the religious people said, hey, these folk got something on them. Boy, they turning stuff upside down here. That's where God is going. That same presence is going to be on you, and you, and you, and you, and also you. Because somebody said, and I believe that too. You getting a little bit more bold in life too. You didn't used to be this bold. That presence comes with an element of boldness to it. That you just gonna not let the devil run roughshod over your house. You're not gonna let him just take advantage of everything. Look at somebody, there's a power shift coming. Tell somebody there's a power shift coming. And you don't have to have all the money in the world either for this power shift to come. You take Rosa Park down there in Alabama. She didn't have no property. She didn't own no house. And she said, I'm tired of this. When you get sick and tired, you're going to see a power shift. And which, I, you ought to be tired of being in the back. You ought to, be, you ought to want to get up in the front now. Somebody say hallelujah. She wasn't rich. She was just written property. But that day she got sick and tired. So don't think it's about all the trappings you gotta have. When God, when you get sick and tired, then God said, okay, I'm gonna bring a power shift. He's just waiting for the body of Christ to stop taking all this mess from the devil. Like you can't do nothing about it. Surely you can't, but he can when you respond properly. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Somebody shout go there. This is here because I got sick and tired of what was happening down here. That's why this is here. And I made a stand. I acted out my faith. I didn't talk faith. I acted it out. So don't think you got to have a pocket full of money. I know this is a common example, but I use somebody like Buzz Moran. He went over in a desert called Las Vegas. Wasn't nothing there. He didn't have that much money at the time. He was a gangster on the run. He got sick and tired. Now you got a big old city called Las Vegas. That big old place. When are you going to get sick and tired? Don't you want a power shift? It's power shift time now. But God got to know that deep in the recess of your heart that you ain't going to put up with the norm. 
some of y'all it's like things to be normal. God want people to step out their pocket. Glory to God. Come on and step out. Tell them stepping out of the pocket. Stepping over into a new dimension. Stepping over into my victory. I'm stepping over into my miracle. I'm sick and tired. You just not mad enough yet. You just not upset enough, man. Rosa Park was upset. She said, no, not today. She said, not today. When is your not today coming? When you gonna get up and say, hey devil, not today. Or you let the day just dictate your life. Carry you through its routine. If you always do what you always done, then you're always going to get the same results. We need some saints to get up and say, hey, not today. I ain't getting on the back of the bus, not today. No, 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 nah, not today. The lady went rich, she was renting her apartment, got rid And then about three weeks later, that was a power shift came. God don't need many, he just need the faithful. He needs somebody who ain't scared. He needs somebody who's not intimidated. He needs somebody who got some bold as a lion courage. Somebody shout bold as a lion. Glory to God. Some of you singles, your day just getting started. Don't you sweep back because you had some bad experiences. Don't you sweep back because things haven't gone well. You get on up and mount up. You tell the devil, hey, might have missed it, but not today. Y'all said, go home now. He done, we done got excited in here now. God wrote it. I quote it. I quote it today. I ain't scattered nothing nowhere. It's our time. It's time for that very person that was on Jesus to be on his church. And it's not necessary just for somebody in the pulpit. It's for the totality of the members in particular. We are all in the ministry, one way or the other. Everywhere you find your feet, you have an opportunity to show the power of God emanating through you. Well, Father, we thank you for the word that was spoken today. I'm getting ready to loose these people as they go out this door on the devil. On the, they, they going out saying, not today. I'm fed up, not today. See a power shift. I like the fact that I don't have to try to change the thing. I like the fact that I step out down here in the earth realm and move in the physical, not, deal, not liking the situation, and then I touch heaven, and God will just, he'll change and rearrange things because of my faith, because I won't put up with it no more. Pharaoh say, hey, you guys not going anywhere. Okay, if you're going, let's compromise. You take the calendar, leave the women here. Most uh-uh. All right, then you take, you going fall out, just, just going outside of the city. Y'all can praise y'all, God. But come on back and do the work and break with destroying the bread. Uh-uh. All right, then we're going to let your women go and, and, and the men go and, and the cattle go, but leave your children here. Moses said, uh-uh. What was he saying? Not today. I'm sorry, Pharaoh. I understand you, Pharaoh. I understand I, I'm over in your territory. But I got a God that be in anybody's territory. Somebody shall go to God. You know, I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. You better glean from me. You better glean. Don't be cute in front of God. You better glean. Y'all, the holy hands of God, touch me. Touch me, Lord Jesus. Oh, I need that touch. Touch me where I won't tolerate. When Moses, he was trying to break Moses down. 
trying to make him compromise, trying to play on his humanity. He was still sticking with the personality and the unction of what God had told him. After he said about that folk not today, God just began to you touch heaven then. See, sometimes your test will come one time, sometimes your test will come two times. God is trying to see if you got some, come on, some longevity, some stickability. Sometimes your test will come third time. Sometimes your test will come the fourth time. But if you'll stand up there and hold on, if you'll stand and do all you can to stand, you'll touch heaven and God up. Pharaoh's army wasn't big enough to hold God's people. He didn't have enough cloud to hold God's people. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want that amazing grace on my life. Y'all stop thinking you are not nothing. You're everything God says you are. And you're coming into your finest hour. Father, we thank you for the word spoken today by your spirit. You wrote it, God. You gave me the bowl enough to quote it. Help us, God, to inculcate this word and allow it to be ingrained in our spirit that we might go out these doors refreshed and blessed with a boldness and a tenacity, God, that has not been given to us. Yet we know that these are the days that you're going to have a power shift. And we don't have to have everything in the material world. All we got to do is have enough faith in God. And you arrange, you, arrange, you arrange and rearrange some things in our lives. Now, Father, we give you praise for the spoken word today. Allow it to become a reality. Let it produce in these vessels that are here today. Father, we pray for those that are out today. Do bless them, God. Those that are sick and bound. We pray, God, that they'll get well and be able to get back into the house of God. Father, we give you praise. We pray for God. Those that brought people to church are beginning to win souls and talk to people about the Lord. We thank you, God, for the special blessing you told me you're going to get the people. You're going to bless them financially with what they need. Father, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Not today.